situation where there is a mass casualty incident like what we saw in Toronto, uh, not using the word terrorism and its political links. Can you sort of ex can you explain why it is you don't use the term terrorism uh, when describing what happened uh, yesterday? Well, uh, I will. Uh... I will leave it to the, uh, the police and security uh, agencies uh, to characterize those events uh, once they have been able to complete their investigation. Uh, what I was very careful to say yesterday and today is that there is, uh, there is no known at this time, the state of what we have in front of us at the moment, there is no known national security connection. Uh, and and the uh, uh, the events that happened on Young Street will be uh, will be uh, very carefully examined by all of the uh, police and other relevant agencies, and the full story of what happened there will uh, will eventually emerge. Uh, but my my immediate uh, concern in the last uh, 24 hours or so is to be clear on the point that as far as the information would tell us to this point. There is no national security connection. And as a follow-up, um, I know that uh, protecting soft targets was something that was on your agenda today, but you were speaking sort of in a broader context about terrorism-related possibilities. Did you speak about soft target attacks that are not related to terrorism? And if you did, what did you discuss today? The, the primary discussion related to, uh, uh, to terrorism, uh, but uh, obviously, uh, there are those who might want to cause mayhem in our uh, uh, in our society that uh, uh, that uh, uh, use certain techniques that uh, uh, that uh, are deliberately designed to uh, uh, to uh, be totally disruptive and fearful, uh, and uh, the the response in Toronto. Uh, yesterday, I think was uh, was was very important to note, uh, and uh, it really, uh, in a way, informed some of the discussion at our meeting. Uh, you will notice uh, in the uh, uh, in the response of uh, the city of Toronto, the police services, and so forth. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, special precautions were taken. Uh, around Union Station with certain barricades being put in place, with uh, the large crowds uh, um, around the, uh, the uh, hockey arena. Uh, there, were, uh, there were trucks and other vehicles appropriately positioned to make sure that the large crowds that would be gathering in that particular area would not be vulnerable to uh, through traffic that, uh, that, that could have been dangerous. And, and what, what we discussed in the, in the meeting today was um, we need to plan in advance uh, how we deploy measures of that kind in order to protect public places and the so-called soft targets. Uh, and uh, we need to uh, make sure that we are fully coordinated in advance if that kind of a response becomes necessary. Uh, so that it can be deployed quickly and efficiently uh, in a way that, uh, that maximizes public safety. Uh, so the, the response by the City of Toronto and the police forces in Toronto yesterday uh, demonstrated uh, uh, a proactive measure uh, just to ensure while, while all the facts were not yet known, uh, just to ensure that every safety measure was, in fact, being taken. You know, when, when incidents occur around the world, I'm often asked uh, the, the, uh, the question of uh, 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 what steps and measures are being taken. And I usually don't answer those questions in any detail because uh, those are matters of, uh, of uh, security operations. Uh, but yesterday was an illustration uh, that was very tangible for people to see that verifies my point. When these incidents happen, our security and police agencies and responsible authorities like those in the city of Toronto <coughs> have planned, they have prepared, they understand where their assets and resources are, they're able to marshal them and deploy them 
and put them into action in a way that maximizes public safety.